<laughs> Greetings friends, welcome to the inventory guide. In this video I'm going to show you how to add an inventory into your game. With these inventories you can pick up weapons and then they'll appear in your inventory and you can then equip them. Not only that, but you can pick up multiple weapons and then switch between them by equipping them in your inventory. I'll also show you how to use consumable items, something like a health potion, so that if you take damage for example, you can go to your inventory, use your consumables, and the number of them will be reduced and you will heal and it'll have its various effects and so on and so forth. Alrighty friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get stuck in. A whoop whoop. Okay friends, so nothing crazy to start with. I've just got a, I've got a little blank basic puppet over here. And the first thing that we're going to work on is the, the little sort of design of the menu for our inventory. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go into gadgets, logic and processing and get us a little microchip. And in this microchip is going to be a whole bunch of text displayers. We're going to use text displayers to make our little 2D text-based menu. So we're going to go into movers and output and get ourselves a text, uh, text displayer. It looks like the little speech bubbles in a screen. Now this is going to be our first one. And this is going to be like when our inventory um, like hasn't been opened yet. It's kind of just like a little button that will be like click this button to open the inventory. So what we're going to do first of all is go to text box properties. We're going to go auto padding, or sorry, auto fit. I'm going to turn it off so that we can now adjust the size of it as we desire. I'm going to put it at the bottom left of the screen, but of course you can put it wherever you like. I'm also going to go to its settings, sorry, the alignment. I'm going to make vertical alignment bottom. That way when we, if, if we want to increase the size, It'll increase the size like this, and the bottom line will sort of stay where it is. I'm also going to want to, in text box properties, the second one, I'm also going to want to make text box curviness zero, so it's a nice sort of flat edge. So when it increases, it doesn't have too much of a difference. For example, if you go text box curviness and you increase it, changing the length will make it quite a, quite a distinct, especially for the edges, you know what I mean? So I like to make it quite flat. So this first one is going to be kind of small because it's kind of like when our inventory is closed and there's nothing in it at the minute. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to name this inventory. I'm going to put the text there. Inventory, inventory. Sorry that my pronunciation is switching so rapidly. And then I'm going to make a touchpad press. So I'm going to go angle bracket, touchpad press, and then close it with another angle bracket. So there we have inventory. And we're going to make it so that when we press this button, it's going to open up our inventory. So that's the first text display we've got. And the next one, I'm going to make a clone of this. The next one is going to be this inventory, but this one is going to be the same little text gadget, but we've sort of increased the size of it. So now it like takes up a, a fair portion of the old screen. You can go all the way to the top if you like, or just, you know, hereabouts, or whatever it might be. That's totally up to you. It could be here even, not super huge. It can even cover the whole screen, friends. It's completely up to you and your, your adventures, whatever you like. I'm going to make it cover a, a fairly decent portion of the screen. And I'm going to change what, what says inventory here. And I'm going to say back. Or you can actually make it say close. So now it'll be like this is what we're at by default. And then when we sort of press the touchpad button, it's going to go shushing. And it's going to open the sky. I'm going to add that functionality now, very simple. All we're going to do is go sensors and input, get ourselves a controller sensor, plop it down, delete all the existing connections. We don't need those. Important properties, remote controllable. Then we're going to add in a little selector, which we'll get from logic and processing. Selector. L1 and square on the controller, the controller sensor. Then we're going to go to page two touchpad button I'm going to connect it to move to next output and it'll be that when it's connected to A it's going to be this one and when it's connected to B it'll be this one so now if we give it a bit of a play test if I press the touchpad cha -ching, and if I press it again closes open close open close and of course you can make this as big or as small as you like um, you can you can make it cover the whole screen um, yeah it's really up to you friends so this will be this will be our little it'll be like a little side inventory panel. Um, yeah, sweet. So 
Cha cha chang, this is what we're going to have for now. Now the next thing we're going to want to do in our second inventory, which is the opened up one, is we're going to want to add the sort of little slots for where all the items and weapons and whatnot will be. So what we're going to do for this one, friends, is we're going to add in a whole bunch more text displays. And the first one we're going to add is like the little little sort of squares that are going to appear. So we're going to copy this text display. And we're going to delete all the text in it and press triangle once so it's just a space. Now we're going to reduce the size of the box. Make sure we've got this one. Reduce the size of the box. You can also press X on this old one so you know where everything is. Whoops. So you know where everything is. And you're going to kind of just make it a little bit smaller. You don't have to worry about the alignment so much. You can make that middle. And you don't have to worry about the this alignment as well. You can make it sort of like nice and free. So you can just place it wherever you like. You can click on this one. If it is being a little bit annoying. And not allowing you to sort of move around. That's fine. You might just want to go to this one and go sort order and make it zero so that means it's on top so now if you look at them both oh sorry not zero but two so now it's on top and you'll be able to move it around that's just if you're trying to get this one and you keep selecting the back one by mistake okay cool then we're going to go to this text displayer we're going to increase the thickness of the border oh sorry not both of them just this one Make a little bit, just make it a little bit thicker so it sort of stands out, you know what I mean? Of course, this is just a little bit of an aesthetic thing. Okay, sweet. So this will be like, you know, this will be like the first item in your, in your inventory. Shwa, shwa, shwa. Dope. Then, we can actually just turn this on. We press R3 so it's running. Then we can copy this guy. And we can put on a grid snap. We'll go L1 and triangle, and then L1 and down on the D-pad to sort of change the size of the grid snap. And now we can actually move this across and have a time. If you find that it's maybe like a little bit too close to the edge there, or whatever it might be, that's chilled. What we can do is we can just make it a little bit smaller. And this guy as well, just make it a little bit smaller. And now we have two boxes that are pretty nicely spaced out. You might want to remove the shadow from both of them. Um, but yeah, you can you can adjust it sort of as you desire, as you like. If you're like, hmm, maybe a little bit more that way. You might want to turn off the grid snap, go a little bit like freehand or even precise move, that sort of a thing. Precise move is also quite nice. And you know, kind of eyeball it and see, see what works for you friends and what looks good. So yeah, that's what we're going to do for our first two little boxes. And then the other ones are going to be easy peasy. We're just going to copy it. We'll put on that grid snap again. I'm just going to, okay, cool, cool, cool. It'll be sort of hereabouts for this guy as well. And you'll continue on in that fashion. Okay, friends. So now what we're going to do is also, just a little bit of a bells and whistles part here. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm just going to add the word inventory at the top. Inventory. Inventory is full. Build more farms. Okay, sweet. And this one, I'm just going to reduce the size of. And I'm going to place it nicely in the center there. Turn off all of this business. The, bo the border. The shadow. The back. The background. Just so that we've got a little, cool, a little like inventory heading there. Okay, sweet. But now we have so many text displayers that it would be just silly to connect all of these to a little like, little wire for each of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into gadgets, get ourselves another microchip, connect it to B, its little power port, and we're going to take all of these and put them in here. Just like that. And it'll work just the same. So we'll go here, press touchpad, and now we have our inventory, which is very empty at the moment. Sorry if it's looking a little bit, um, not exactly perfectly spaced out, friends. You can, of course, uh, mess with that as you design your own sort of...
preferences, your own games and so on and so forth. If you want to make it look a little bit rustic, of course, you can do that too. But if I just quickly have a look here, I see that these these chaps are a little bit on the on the close side, so I'll just maybe move them down one more. That looks cool. And now if we have another look, that's looking pretty cool. Everything's looking pretty pretty neat and orderly. And we have a little inventory. That is looking cool. Very cool indeed. Okay, sweet friends. Um, something that you might want to do now is to actually create the little icons for your various items that you're going to be picking up. So, friends, let's say that for now what we're going to have in our game is um, something like a sword, something like a bow, and, I don't know, something like a health potion. So I'm quickly going to go and make little sculpts of those, because they aren't super important uh, to the logic of this. I'm just going to make some little sculpts now. Okay, friends, so I just made three little little items for us that we're going to be able to pick up and sort of add into our inventory. So the first one is a little sword over here. Then I made a little bow. It's very chunky. And then I made a little health potion. So I'm just going to put these off to the side, and we're going to use those later. But now that I've got my three items that I want to be able to add into my inventory, I think what I'm going to do now is design the icons for them. So in my inventory that I've got over here, as we are familiar with, I want to have like a little icon here. Now, one of the things um, that you might actually struggle with a little bit in dreams is the is using the kind of emojis and that sort of a thing to make like custom 2D icons for your user interfaces. Because there's only a certain amount of emojis that are in the sort of dreams engine. Um, and there's only so many sort of custom symbols that dreams has itself. Um, if you want a full and comprehensive list, I'm going to add a little link in the description below linking to a really awesome page that Tap Giles has made um, with like a collection of all the different like Dreams icons that you can add into your game and how to add them. And it's like really nicely organized and the, like the categories are really nice and it's just really easy to find what you're looking for there. So I'm going to add a link to that below. Definitely check that out, friends. It's a totally invaluable resource. But I'm also going to show you now just some like little tips and stuff when it comes to doing these things yourselves. Um, you can actually use like simple shapes and even just the shape of the text box itself to make something pretty sweet. So, okay, cool. The first thing I want to do is to make a little like sword icon. And I'm going to make it in this top left position here. Okay, sweet friends, so I'm just going to move these other ones off to the side so they're kind of just, you know, out of the way. I'm going to give us a little bit of space. Move these dudes over there. Shwing, shwing. Just move them out of the way. And I'll come back to them as I desire. So first I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to go like, okay, cool. The first thing that I want to do is make a like sword icon that looks kind of like my silly square sword that I've got over here my like you know right angled sword so what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to not have any text I'm just going to have the little space bar that we have that kind of just to have a little bit of a space the reason why we leave that little space friends is because if there isn't a space then the text display won't show up because it's like oh there's no text and you can do all sorts of crazy you know stuff to it blah 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 um, change the shape and the color and everything, but if there's nothing in the text display, it won't actually display. So that's a key thing to just keep in mind. But yes, yeah, so let's get through to designing it. So I'm going to make it black, and I'm going to change the the size of it. You'll want to turn off your grid snap for this because it's going to be a lot of sort of eyeballing it. You're also going to want to go to your settings and go allow rotation. So I'm now going to go, I'm going to grab it, and you can go onto it and press R2, and then, oh, let me just get it over here. I'm just going to pick it up with R2, and then with L2, and the right analog stick, I can now sort of rotate it. So this can be a little bit tricky, friends. But you're pretty much just eyeballing it, and you're having a wonderful time. So you might want to make it a little bit thinner. It's totally up to you, friends. So that's that. And then I'm just going to copy that as well. And this one I'm going to have, and I'm going to rotate it further still, this time with L2. And then I'm going to reduce the size of it 
and now I've got a very rough looking sword icon. And there you are, friends. Pretty much just as simply as that, you can get a very simple looking custom icon just by being like a little bit creative with the, with the little tools that we've got. There are a whole bunch of emojis, and once again, definitely check out that list that Tapjow's made. If it's a little bit off the angle, then, you know, just adjust as you, as you need, as you, as you desire. Oh, sorry. I think it's this one now. Just adjust as you desire. That looks cool. Simple, fancy. I'll leave all the, all the funkiness up to you, friends, and all the, the creativity and stuff. Cool. Because the main focus of here, of this one, is the logic. Now I want to make the bow. So for the bow, you might laugh at me, friends, because I'm going to do something pretty chill. But I'm just going to, I'm going to copy this. And this one is going to be the letter D. <laughs> and so I've got the letter D. And I'm going to increase the size. Oh, you also want to get rid of the stuff like the background, the border, the shadow. Oh, sorry, the shadow is already off. And of course, once again, we go allow rotation. And I'm going to sort of increase the size of it. And now that's that. We've got the letter D. What's cool about using letters for this sort of a thing is that there's different fonts. So you can have like different vibes. Um, like that looks pretty cool as well for like a little, if you want to make it a bow. Um, if you want like a bit of a curve. There's really like a lot of stuff you can use. Um, like you, when you pretty much just, that's actually pretty good for a bow as well. Um, you pretty much just think a little bit outside of the box. I like that one. And you can, like, to, to some it is merely the letter D, and to others it is a, it's a freaking arrow, dude. So, oh yeah, there you go. Cool, then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go L2 and triangle, and I'm going to find the, like, long line. Now the long line... The sort of like straight slash sort of a thing. I'm just going to do it here. Align it sort of centrally with the bow. And then the final thing I'm going to do is. I'm going to copy this once again. And now I'm going to do. You can either do a V. Or you can do like pretty much whatever you like. You can also do like the little greater than smaller than. You know like cur curly bracket sort of a vibe. Okay cool. And then I'm going to go like this, and make it a little bit smaller, line it up here, and here you've got a nice bow, sorry, it's a little bit janky looking, you can also adjust the font, there are many, many different sizes here, the second uh, font has a pretty chunky little greater than, smaller than sign, so definitely experiment with that, sorry, it's super like, it's a little bit finicky, especially because... Okay, that looks cool. So now I've got a little bow there. So there you are, friends. Just as easy as that. I've got a little bow. And then the last one I'm going to do is the potion. Okay, sweet. So really, friends, literally, this was once the letter D, and now it's become a bow. This was once two little text displays, and now there we are. We've got a little sword. Are they? Do they look silly? Absolutely. Are they a little bit crazy? 100%. But they'll do the job. At least for this demonstration. Okay, cool. I'm copying another one. And this is going to be a health potion. Um, freak. Let's say for this health potion, it's going to be like spherical. Um, I kind of have, I have like a bit of a color scheme going on here. And that they're all kind of like black or whatever. But I suppose for the health potion, it's like a little bit of an exception. So I can make this one green, I think. You know, because you might have like a green potion for health potion. And then like a blue one for your mana potion that sort of a thing and then i will i'm lit, i'm pretty much making these up on the spot friends so yeah then i'll copy this one um this one i will allow rotation i'll make it like a little bit like longer longer neck sort of a thing you know so it mimics the look of our little potion over here there and then I'm going to also add like a little, I'll add like a little one over here. This will be like the lid. I'll flatten it a bit. Flatten it. 
What you might uh, think of this is as... Blah, sorry, English has just escaped my brain. What you might think of when you see this is, oh, this is like text gadget sculpting. And I would say, absolutely. Sorry, it is, it, is a little, it is a little bit janky. I won't lie to you. I won't lie to you, friends. Um, also, be sure that you change the color of the text box if you're doing text box stuff. And the text displayer if you're doing text displayer stuff. Or text, the actual text itself. Because I was going here and I was like, oh, why isn't the color changing? That's because I'm actually using a text box. So there you are. L2 to rotate it. Cool. And there you are, friends. Like, now we've just created three custom icons, 2D icons that are text displayers and will react just like a text displayer would. Um, and there you are, friends. Just a little bit of funkiness there. So that's a little bit of uh, where logic and creativity meet. So that is how you make your own custom icons that correlate to particular objects. Okay, sweet. Now let us go about how to actually pick these items up. Woohoo! Okay, friends, so now we have our cool little system for our inventory. That's looking cool. But now I want to actually make it so that when I walk into this object, when my puppet walks into the object, it's going to be then available in my inventory. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make it so that all of these funky um, icons that we've made, I'm going to say that by default, they're going to be off. So it's only when we actually walk into it, it's going to go da ding and it's going to appear and we're going to see that the item is in our inventory. You can also just make it kind of grayed out or whatever you like, friends. It's totally up to you. So, how do we make this happen? So, I'm just going to quickly close this. And I'm going to go to my sword for starters. And what I'm going to do is, I, what I like to do is, I like to make the, the rotatey, floaty sort of item. So, what it's going to do is, it's going to be off to a little bit of an angle. And it's going to sort of be like floating in the middle of the air. And it's going to go like, wow, 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 wow. And you're going to be like, oh, cool. That's an item I can pick up. And when you pick it up, it's going to disappear. And it's going to move into your sort of inventory. So the way that we do that, friends, is as follows. We're going to put down a little little, little block over here. Going to get a grid snap. And this is going to be kind of the, the base of the, the object. Because, of course, it'll be floating. But um, in order for that to happen, we're going to need it to actually have something to count as the base and also like the center because otherwise the rotation might uh, look a little bit funky so I'm going to have our little block there move this guy over here and then group these together now if I add a oh let me turn off this grid snap quickly and this mirror now if I go into this little block and I go gadgets put down a little microchip do 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 and I go into move as an output and I add in a little rotator. Just a simple rotator. Don't need a fancy one. Then I'm going to go into grid snap again. Align it so it's pointing upwards and so it spins in a thiswood fashion. And then the, all the speed and stuff isn't super important. You can of course adjust it as you desire. But if we just go, it's going to do this. Which looks pretty cool. If you don't like the look of the box, which you shouldn't, you just turn visibility off. And now, if we're in our game, we're going to see, cool, there's like a collectible sword. I don't know why, but when stuff is spinning and floating, I just want to, you know, I feel like it's like, ah, oh, I just want to add this to my inventory. Okay, sweet friends. So that's all there is to making a sort of collectible uh, looking item. But how do we make this item actually collectible now? That's the, the core of the question. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to this, and I'm going to put in a little trigger zone. And this will detect when our player is near. You might want to make it, you might want to align it with sort of where the sword is. Make it kind of small, because you don't want it to, to disappear before you've even walked into it. Make it kind of small. You can make it whatever shape you like. You can, of course, change the zone shape and size here. You can make whatever shape you like. And when we get to this, it's going to be destroyed. But that's not all. We're also going to add some logic to our little microchip that we've got over here, which is our kind of, you know, our important logic for our game, our sort of inventory logic. I actually call it that. So we, this is our inventory logic. So in our inventory logic uh, microchip, we're going to add in a variable now. And this variable will be 
sword. And there's going to be two important values for sword. When sword is at zero, that or like false, that means you don't have a sword. When sword is at one, that means you do have the sword. In other words, it's been collected. Luckily, we don't have to actually add any funky logic for this sort of stuff to work in terms of zero and one. Basically, when it's zero, the output is negative, And when it's one, the output is positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a little keyframe. And when we pick up the sword, right, and it's all working and so on and so forth, we're going to turn on this icon that we've made over here. And of course, it will only appear when touchpad has been pressed and sword is equal to one. So I'll just connect it over here and we'll say sword icon visible or on or whatever you like sword icon on and now we'll go back to our sword and how do we set sword to one in other words how do we make it so that we actually have the sword well when our character is close enough this sword is going to disappear but also grab a little variable modifier pop it in there connect it name of variable sword operation type set update type when powered on and the value will be one so when you walk up to the sword it's going to disappear and this is going to get set to one so here's my dude if i look at my inventory empty 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 but now if i go over here aha okay the sword disappears if i look at my inventory oh, there's the sword wow amazing <laughs> If we do it again, I'll keep my inventory open this time, so you can see it happening in, in action. The inventory is open, cha-cha, then the sword appears. It disappears in the world, and it appears in my inventory. Just as easily as that, friends. Literally, and look, look at the sword. There's like nothing in here. So there's a rotator, that's just for the, the aesthetic, the look, the cool vibes. Trigger zone to detect when your player is here. When it gets to there, it's going to make sword equal to one, and this particular physical object is going to disappear. But when sword equals to one, we know that our sword icon is going to be on and it's going to appear that way in our inventory just like that at the moment this is all just in terms of appearance um, and we'll also be getting into how to equip it but yeah friends it's a pretty it's a pretty similar system for these items as well um, it's the exact same you'll just go okay sweet so on and so forth this goes cool the only thing that will be different friends is this health potion so for the health potion i'm going to do just the exact same i'm going to add in a little bit of a block over here do a grid snap so it lines up nicely and make it so that it's you know on the floor that looks pretty cool logic and processing add down that microchip add in that microchip sorry then we're going to turn off the grid snap we're going to go okay cool moves and output sorry for moving fast friends but this part we've done already moves and output rotator make sure that our rotator is pointing upwards the little, you know, the little stick part over here so that it spins in a thiswood direction. Sorry, this microchip is getting on my nerves a bit. And if we look, okay, cool, it's spinning. Oh, we should group these together, of course. Okay, cool. Sorry, the reason it's not spinning is because I put the microchip on this before I group them. So I'm actually just going to take this guy out and stick him onto this guy again. And now we are working. So I surface snapped it onto the whole group, not just the little cube there. Okay, sweet. And then just as before, we're going to make it so that when we have our particular uh, object, when we're close enough to our object, trigger zone, it's going to be like, okay, sweet, trigger zone. When you get close to this, this health potion, that looks cool, that looks cool. It is going to, of course, this physical object is going to disappear, thanks to the help of a destroyer. And then, I'm going to add in a new variable, and it's going to be... I'm going to say HP health potions, you know, HP potions, health point potions. I don't need to explain to you guys what HP means, but you know, you never know. And then I shall just adjust it. So there, okay, cool, cool, cool. Alrighty, so HP potions, and that is cool. So what you might want to do differently is make it so that you can you can have multiple HP potions. So you'll you'll be able to carry like, ooh, I can carry a hundred, I can carry a million, I can carry however many. And the way that you'll do that is you'll just make it so that, okay, sweet. We're going to have, similar to this, we'll add in a little keyframe. 
And in this keyframe, it's going to turn on our little like potion icon. We'll turn them on. But then you might want to also have a little number displayer. And the number displayer will be, you can put it wherever. Sorry, it'll, it'll, it'll start looking a little bit funky now, friends, because we're going to be starting connecting wires and all sorts of stuff all over the, all over the show. But I'm going to have this number displayer. And it'll also be off by default. But it will be powered by this, which is health potion on. But then let's look at the other icon over here and we're going to add this little number so that we can see like, oh, okay, sweet. So we currently have two health potions or ah, we currently have however many health potions. You might want to go to sort order and make it two or whatever it might be or always on top, that sort of a thing. You can get rid of the background and all that sort of stuff um, if, you, if you desire and you can just make it like a little bit larger. Sweet. So there we will go over there. And we will connect the value for this this particular number range to HP potions over here. And then that will be equal to whatever it is equal to. And not only that, but when it equals one, it'll be connected here. So what's cool about this is this is having multiple functions. It's, it's telling us, okay, negative value when it's zero. And when it's one, it's going to be equal to that. But it's also going to tell us the current value will be equal to the number range. So that's looking pretty cool. Now we go back to our potion. Logic and processing, variable modifier, connecty connectington. Name of variable, HP potions. Now we're going to go add rather than set. Before we had set to one, but now we're going to say add one. And of course the value will be one. So that's looking pretty cool. So if I go here and I'm chilling, I'm looking at my inventory, I collect my little health potion and I've got one health potion. That looks pretty cool. I'm just going to make our little cube invisible. But now I'm going to copy this dude. Copy, copy, copy. Cha, cha, cha. And now we're going to have a few health potions. So at the moment, my inventory is empty. And I've got one health potion. Now I've got two. Now I've got three. Even four. And ah, oh, let me pick up that sword. That sword looks great. Ah, oh, now I've got a sword and I've got four health potions. Bro, the quest is, is going to be a great time. We're going to have so much fun on this quest. I've got my health pots. We're going to be sorted. So yes, friends. So the difference is, this is the original one. A little rotator that looks good. Trigger zone. Increase the sword value of the sword variable. Or sorry, set the sword value to one. So zero is don't have the sword. One is have the sword. And of course, this physical object will be destroyed. In our inventory logic over here, the way it works is we've got our sword logic. Once again, when it's zero, no sword. When it's one, yes, sword. <laughs> and then we've got our little icons and they will just be turned on by this keyframe. Easy peasy. Then if we've got our health P, our health P, our HP pot over here, the logic is all pretty much the same, except that instead of setting the value to one, we're adding one. That way you can have more than just one. And then these are all the same. It's just a little icon, works the same with this little this little keyframe. And this is just a number displayer that's directly connected to the HP potions variable. Easy peasy. And then I'm just going to rename this keyframe quickly to HP potions potions on. Sweet. So now we know what all the keyframes are doing. It's good to name your keyframes, friends, so everyone knows what's cracking. Okay, sweet friends. So that is pretty much all there is to actually picking up the item. And now the final question, friends, I think it's the final question, is how do you actually equip these items now? It's cool that I can pick up the sword and see it in my inventory, but now I want to actually hold it in my hand. Well, let's get stuck in. So in order to actually hold your weapons or, you know, drink your potions, that sort of a thing, what you're going to want to do is for your sword, for example, I'm just going to copy this sword. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to delete this little microchip. Um, I'll just turn on preview invisibility. I'll delete this little. Oh, I'll delete this little cube as well, so that now I've just got like the sword, the sort of the sword itself. None of the other logic that was attached to it, because that logic was related to the, like the sword pickup. So this is like the sword pickup logic, but I want just the sword itself. 
So I'm going to put this in my dude's hand, in my person's hand over here. And I'm just going to zoom in so that it's specifically attached to their hand. I might make it a little bit smaller. So it's sort of, it's more, a little bit more to scale with the character themselves. And then here we are. We've got a little sword in our character's hand. But of course, it's not going to be attached from the beginning, guys. What is this? What is this? You know what I mean? It's no swords from the beginning. You start with, with empty hands. I'm going to go physical properties. Invisible. So now I'll turn off preview invisibility, which I'd put on for just a moment. Okay, now I've got no sword. Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. So, there's no sword here. Who said anything about a sword? Craziness. Now what I want to do is make it so that I can actually pick up the sword and it'll appear in my hands. So, we want to be able to go into our inventory itself. And we want to be able to, like, actually select things. Not only just look at the items, but we want to be able to sort of go through our inventory and when we click on something, our character starts to wield it. You know, they equip it. So what we're going to need for this, friends, is actually a little bit of a, a grid-based selection system. And I actually learned this from my boy Vince Cully. So definitely check out his videos. He's done stuff on like grid-based movement and all these sorts of things. The key to this, friends, is you're going to have to use a little bit of the old maths. If you remember uh, uh, from maths, we talk about the X value and the Y value. And X is sort of left and right, and the Y is up and down. So by using a grid-based system like that, we can actually uh, sort of select different areas in our inventory. We can go left, we can go right, we can go up, we can go down, and we can select all the little different, uh, all the little different thingies. The little different icons. So I can go like, okay, cool, I want to select the top left one, or the right one, or let me go down. You know what I mean? So we're going to use a grid-based system. And you're going to say, me lad, bro, what are you talking about? Let's see how this works. And I'm going to say, let's get stuck in. So first, we're going to need two variables. And can you guess what these variables are going to be? They're going to be, I'm going to call it inventory. Select X. And can you guess what this one's going to be? Inventory. Select Y. So we've got the X value and we've got the Y value. Left and right up and down. Now, you have to set the minimum and maximum for these, because uh, these are very important, because if you keep pressing up or down on your D-pad or the analog, whatever it might be, you could keep going or, or off into infinity and you wouldn't be selecting anything. So for the X, if we look at our inventory, 0X is going to be this top left one, and when X is equal to 1, it's going to be this one over here. So the min value is going to be 0, and the max value is going to be 1. So the lowest value we're going to have is 0 when it's at the starting point. And then if I increase x by 1, it's going to go here. So we only have two rows, so x is going to just be 0 or 1. For y, on the other hand, it's going to be a different story. So y, this is the first one, this value is 0. And then we're going to be moving downwards. So this one is going to be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Does that make sense, friends? You could also be like, oh, I'm just going to make this zero and that's going to be one and that's going to be minus one blah, blah, blah. really whatever whatever uh, happens to you and whatever you reckon is the the best system for yours but we're going to say this is where y equals zero this is where y equals minus one minus two minus three so this one would be x is one and y is minus two this one is going to be x is zero and y is minus three this one is going to be x is one y is zero this is x is zero y is zero does that make sense friends so X is left and right, Y is up and down. A little bit of a maths lesson in there for you too. So the minimum value is not going to be 0, but minus, two, uh, minus 3. And the max value is going to be 0, which sounds a little bit funny. Like, oh, this is weird. It's a little bit backwards. But of course, it's just because we're going down. You could have just as easily make this um, 0 and make it Y 0 here. And this is 1, 2, 3. It's really up to you, friends. Okay, sweet. Now, we're going to put these over here, and we're going to add in a bunch of calculators. I'm going to calculate over here, and calculate over here. Wait, I'm just going to do one, then I'm going to go equals, then I'm going to copy it. Because there's two values, so I'll have two calculators, because x can be 0 or 1. And then y, do you know how many calculators we're going to need for this one? We're going to need three. Oh wait, four in fact. So it's going to be one... When x is 0, x is minus 1, x is minus 2, 
x is minus 3. And now we're going to connect these to a. a, this is when x is 0, this is when x is 1. Connect these all to a. This is when y is 0, when y is minus 1, when y is minus 2, and of course when y is minus 3. Perfect. So now we're going to make it so that in order to actually get this to select our particular items, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a bunch of little AND gates. So we're in our logic and processing, we're going to go AND gate. And now friends, you can actually take all of this stuff, and if you fancy it, you can, you know, plop it into here, so on and so forth, or you can just keep it where it is at the moment. But now we have to use our brains a little bit to just remember what everything is. So this one here, the top left, is when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So when x is 0 and y is 0, I'm going to add a little keyframe. And this keyframe is going to go to this text displayer. And it's going to change the color of, let's say, the border. And it's going to make it red. Do, 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 do. So now we know that this particular one is selected. That looks cool. Then, if I want the bow, for example, I'm going to put the little bow there. Uh, if I want to go over to that one, that's when x is equal to 0. No, that's when x is equal to 1. And when y is equal to 0, because we've moved to the right. So that's cool. So I'm going to add another AND gate. So x is equal to 1 and y equals 0. So it's still the first whoops, It's still the first row, so y is 0. Cha -cha -cha -cha. You can also add little, little rows there if, if they'll help you, because it can be a little bit confusing if you aren't like a maths genius, which I definitely am not. I'm bad at maths. But I can still do this, and so can you, friends. Okay, sweet. Now I'm going to put in another keyframe, and I'm going to go like, okay, sweet. Now I'm going to make this text displayer. Remember, if we're doing the border. I'm going to make that one red. So that looks pretty cool. And I'm going to connect it over here. So friends, currently, this is looking absolutely fabulous. Then the last one I'm going to do, just to demonstrate, I'm going to copy this AND gate again. And I want to do the bottom, the, the first one in the second row on the left. So this is when X is equal to, remember, X is 0 here. X is 1 over here. So X is 0. And Y is 1. So that's actually not this one, but this one. If you are math geniuses, please bear with me that I'm, I'm if I'm going a bit slowly. I'm not, so yeah. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, sorry, not the text, but the border properties. Okay, sweet. So there we are, and that's going to go like that. So that makes this one red. And now you're like, okay, me lad, that's dope. I see how the system works, and you'll be able to crack on from there. You just need AND gates and these various calculators and these little keyframes. You can change the name of these keyframes to something like highlight. You don't necessarily need to rename every one. You can, of course. Specifically, you know, you can be like highlight, you know, x0, y0, you know. But I'll just do it like that for now because you know what's cracking. You can also just go over this guy. Check. If you go on this text displayer, you'll see, ah, oh, look, this keyframe is sort of flashing. And if you go to this one, ah, oh, okay, cool. I can see this guy's flashing. And if I go here, ah, oh, I can see this guy's flashing as well. So that is all you'll need over there. Because once once these little keyframes are flashing, we know that there's a connection to this particular item. Any piece of logic or whatever, you'll see. Alrighty. So now, how do we actually navigate this menu? Well, what we're going to do is, we're going to go with our controller sensor. And when we press left and right, cha -cha -ching, when we press, oh, what am I doing? What is my brain doing? Ah, yes. When we press left and right, on the d-pad so when I press right on the d-pad it's going to increase inventory select X by one so it's going to increase it by one friends make sure you don't have it at set so it's going to increase it by one then if I press left on the d-pad it's going to increase it what's well, going to add minus one which sounds a little bit counterintuitive but yes we add minus one so now if i look at my menu 
and I'm feeling cool. Cha chang. If I press right, we're doing that one. If I press left, we're doing this one. Cha 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 cha. So there you are, friends. Woo! So now I'm able to select different different little blockies, just like that. And then if we want to go d up and down, we're gonna go. Okay, cool. Let me give us a little bit of space here. It is getting a little bit cramped, friends. You just have to bear with me and all these crazy wires. We're going to go inventory select Y. And we're going to go, when I press down on the D-pad, it's going to decrease it or, or add minus one. And when I press, oh, let's copy this guy. And then when I press up, on the d-pad it's going to increase it by what's going to add one so that might look a little bit crazy friends but essentially when i press right when i press right it's going to make x increase by one when i press left x minus one up y plus one down y minus one and this allows us to use a system that way we can go ah oh, cool woohoo just like this. I've only done these three over here, friends, but I will do the rest. Um, I will do the rest sort of in the version that I release, uh, just so that it's all working. But now you know how it works, friends, and you can, you know, have a time. In fact, if I go down and now I press right on the D-pad and I press up, it'll take me to that one. Because even though I haven't highlighted all the blocks, the logic will work. Similarly, I can go one, two, three, and if I go right, one, two, three. There you are. And now I'm at the top again. So the system works even though I haven't worked it, uh, made all of them highlight and so on and so forth. But there you are. Now if I run and I pick this up, okay, cool. If I get a potion, okay, sweet, I've got my potion. And I can like select my potion. I can select my particular item. So on and so forth. So now, friends, we have our grid-based selection system. We have our icons. We have our potions that can be counted. We have our items that can be picked up. But now you're like, mean lad, bro, stop beating about the bush. How do I actually make it so that... I can select these items and start slaying my enemies with it. And I'll say, join me for the next video. Jokes, jokes. Now I'm going to do it right now. Okay, friends. So now in order to actually equip our sword, what we're going to need is one last variable. And this variable is going to be our equipped variable. And basically, the way this works is you can only have, let's say you can only have one thing equipped at a time. So you can't have your sword and your bow equipped at the same time. So we're just going to have one equipped variable. You also can't be drinking a health potion while you're, you know, slicing dudes with your swords or whatever. Um, you know, I mean, you won't have your sword and your bow out at the same time. So you only want to have one thing equipped at a time. So we'll have it so that when equipped is zero, that's when you have nothing in your hands. When the equipped variable equals one, that's when you have a sword in your hands. When the equipped variable is two, that's when you have a bow. When it's three, that's when you have a potion, blah, blah, blah. Your spells, your bazooka, your anything really. That is all you'll need, just one little variable. So how do we make this how do we make this variable now equal to sword? Well, or equal to a value that will make us equip a sword. So we're gonna make it so that when we are on inventory select, we're gonna add in a little bit of an AND gate over here. So it'll be cool. When I have selected it and whoops, and I have pressed X. Then it's going to increase the value of this variable, which is equipped. What's going to set it? It's going to set it to one. So when it when it is set to one, it's going to have our sword equipped. But we're actually going to have to have one more thing on our AND gate because, of course, we have to have the sword as well. So now, what's happening here? This AND gate is checking. Do we have the sword? Let's actually do it in order. Sorry, let me let me start over. Let me start over. So, do we have the sword? Yes, we have the sword. Is the sword currently selected in the inventory? Yes, it is currently selected in the inventory. Have I pressed the equip button? Yes, I've pressed the equip button. In that case, I have the sword, I've selected it, and I have just pressed the equip button. It's going to change the value of the equipped variable to 1. When the equipped variable equals to 1, I am going to equip my sword, which is just going to make it visible. 
and it might change my stance or it might you know change the attacks i have if you're interested in that sort of stuff check out my stance change uh, ability guide uh, which is inspired by ghost of Sh tsushima hope you guys are enjoying the iki island update that issue's lit bro it's so great anyway okay sweet so now my sword will be equipped and you can change the name of this keyframe to sword equipped and so on and so forth so here we are let's give it a try is it gonna work or is mean lad all fluff so here i'm looking at my inventory i've got sweet nothing i pick up my sword i select it i have a sword and it's in my inventory i now press x and i've jumped and i have my, and i have my sword as well if you want to like make it so that your controls are disabled when you're actually in, in your inventory, that is easy as pie. All you're going to do is, you're going to open up your little character. You're going to press L1 and square on their controller sensor. You're going to go to the last, no, sorry, the second last one, the important properties. And you're going to see a little input here that says disable controls. When I'm on B, which is our, remember when you press the touchpad, it'll go from showing just the inventory here to having your open inventory. So when it's B, it's going to disable our controller. But this is just the controller that's in our particular character. What you don't want to do is have a keyframe that just turns off the, the controller in your character, because then your puppet will jump out and it'll, it'll just be a mess. So now, let's have another try. So on my character, when I'm looking at my inventory, I can't actually control my character. I can still look in my inventory and move around in my inventory, as you can see. Lots of fun. But I can't actually control them. If I close my inventory, ah, I can control them again. So sweet vibes. So here we go. Ch -ch 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 -ch. This is also like a Dark Souls inventory, guys. Like the game will keep playing. You know, the enemies will still keep attacking you. So it's hectic. Dark Souls is hard. Anyway, so here we, here you are. You've picked up your sword. You've picked up your potion. Sh -ch 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 -ch. You might like drink your potion or whatever it might be. And so on and so forth. So there you are, friends. You have just equipped your sword. And you can now venture off into the sunset and slay all the monsters. You go from being a, a bare-handed vagabond with nothing in your inventory. Now you can pick up your sword, equip it, and now you're, you know, you're a hero. You're the champion. You're the knight. You're going you're gonna to slay the dragon, save the kingdom, all that stuff. One that might work slightly differently is, of course, once again, the lovely potion. Because, of course, you're not going to necessarily equip the potion. It's just going to sort of increase your health. So, I'm just going to make it so that I'm not going to do a whole health bar. Um, but I will just have a little number display that displays our current HP. Um, although, it's, it is fairly simple, but I'm just going to keep it even simpler for now so at the moment i've got actually let me quickly just make a little health bar okay health bar coming in three two one yeah okay sweet friends so i've just made a little uh hp bar logic check out mr wushi's video i'll add that link in the description as well um which is a cool one on how to do little hp bars but yeah so basically if i reduce my health it's going to go down it's going to get a little bit redder so on and so forth so that looks pretty cool but i want to make it so that when i go into my inventory and i use a potion it's going to restore my hp so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into my inventory logic. And of course, this is going to work slightly differently. Not hugely, but just slightly differently. I'm going to have AND gate. I'm going to say AND gate. We're going to go, okay. If I've got a potion, if I have selected the potion, and I press the X button, then something is going to happen. I'm not going to equip the potion. I'm, I'm not that old school that like you literally take the potion out and drink from it but it'll just be like okay cool it'll reduce the amount of potions that you have and it will increase your hp so what's going to happen we're going to go to get ourselves a sorry we're going to go to logic and processing get ourselves a variable modifier and this one is going to go hp potions and it's going to be add minus one Okay, friends, so now we have our little HP potion. Uh, when we press all our, when all our various things are true, our HP potion count is reduced by one. And we're going to take this connection. We're going to go to our puppet. And we're going to heal them back to full HP. So we're going to go here, reset health. And that will reset it to 100%. Cha ching We get our potion. And we fully healed. So let's try that again, friends. 
So we've just come out of the cave of wonders. We've just bested a mighty dragon. We equip our sword. And we're low on HP. So we pick up a little health potion. We go to our inventory. We drink it. Our health is healed to max. And uh, the potion disappears from our inventory. And yes, we have a good time. You can also use health modifiers if you want to increase your health by, by a certain amount. But I just use this as kind of like a full health heal. All that sort of stuff is... The main, the main thing is how to get the infantry to work. If I have a few different potions here, for example, I'll be like, okay, cool, you know, I'm injured here. I'll grab all these potions, and I have four, I'll heal, and I still have three, and I'm looking pretty cool. Now I've got my sword, of course. Cha-ching! I'm going to equip my sword. I'm going to have a, a sweet time. Okay, friends, so I have now made it so that we can go to... Any, we've got our inventory, we can go to our sword and our bow, and we can pick it up. So we can go, sword is activated, bow is activated, we can pick up our potion, drink a potion, so on and so forth. Okay, sweet friends. Now, the only thing that's changed is that, as you remember, in our equipped, uh, our equipped variable, when equipped equal to one, we just made a connection that it would be like sword would be equipped. But now when we have multiple things that we want to equip, we just add a calculator. So when it equals zero, nothing's going to happen. When it equals 1, when A is equal to 1, it's going to make it so that our sword is equipped, or it's visible. When A equals, or when the equipped equals 2, then that's going to be when our bow is equipped. And of course, um, yeah, I just took this bow, I added it to the hand, so on and so forth. The logic of the bow pickup is the same as all the others, or the same as the sword at least. And yes, friends, that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. So to briefly go over once again, we have our pickup items that are looking pretty cool. Um, the only thing that we have in them is a trigger zone, a rotator, a variable modifier that makes it so that our sword is like in our inventory. We have picked it up and then it disappears. We've got our variables that I just mentioned. These are the like, do I have them variables? Zero is no, one is yes. And it shows that our icons will display. Of course, we have our icons. By default, we just have our inventory pop up or a little text display over here. And then when we open it up, we have our funky, creatively made little icons here, which are looking very cool. Um, all the boxes are always visible. But these particular things that we've made are only visible when we actually have that particular item. Then we have our grid-based movement system. We've got our remote controllable controller sensor here that increases and decreases the X and Y values, which correlate with a particular position on our user interface. So this is X, X and Y, X. So it's zero, zero. Um, this one is uh, one, zero. And th those correlate to X and Y values. Then we've got the selectors, which is our grid-based selection system. And it basically just highlights the particular, if we go over here, we'll see that this one is highlighted. It's got the little lines there, and it'll make it red just like that. Then when we um, actually have it in our inventory, when we are selecting it in our, in our inventory and we've pressed X, then it's going to actually equip it. It's going to change the equip variable. When the equip variable equals different values, it is going to do things. So it's going to make our sword active and it'll make it visible. It's going to make our bow visible. With the health potion, it's slightly different. It doesn't make it uh, visible. What it does is it resets our health. So we've healed to full HP. You can, of course, also use a health modifier. And it reduces the amount of health potions that we currently have. So that works slightly differently. But of course, it's um, all part and parcel when it comes to an inventory system. But yes, friends, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and found it uh, useful. Please leave questions if you have any. It, it is quite a complex video and there is quite a few things going on. But uh, if you're interested in finding out a bit more and, you know, maybe deepening it and applying it to your own dreams and so on and so forth, uh, do let me know and then I shall do my best to try and help you out. Thank you so much, friends, for all your support and for watching this video all the way through to the end. Um, please comment, yeah boy, if you made it all the way through to the end. <laughs> Thank you so much, friends. And I shall catch you, cha cha chang on the flip flop. Peace out, friends. Woo! Hey, thanks for watching, friends. I just want to give a massive shout out to my Patreon patrons, or as I like to call them, the Mean Knights. Thank you so much, Tap Giles. Ooh, thanks so much, Tap Sensei. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And Salt Levels Max, my first patron. Ah, oh, ye. Friends, if you want to support your boy and get access to some bonus content, consider becoming a patron. Thanks for watching, friends. Peace out. Mm -hmm.